I'm on. Welcome back to Don't Take the Box. It's Tuesday, so it's unboxing time. Let's get right to it. You get the first few, uh, as always. Alright. Big pack with a lot of loose things. But I'm not sure if I'm going to. Ooh. First, I'm going to pull out all the things underneath and see if these make us any wiser. First of all, a very unique unique shaped pad. It's not necessarily very long, but it is very thin. So for miniature landscapes and I don't know, maybe bookmarks or something, or I don't know, very large gift tags. It is very light though. It has it has some texture, but it doesn't it's not very thick. I'm going to see if oh 20 sheets, 140 GSM cartridge paper. Hmm. So this is not going to handle wet media very well. Our first clue. Secondly, we have this month's artwork. It's a very, very pretty owl in a sort of calligraphy style, maybe like a touch of Midden Eastern, I think. Possibly. Maybe that's just my my imagination. It's made by Ayman Hazuri, also known as Calligraphy paint on Instagram and Facebook. All right. It is very pretty though. I love owls. Then we have this crawler zine with the same style of, I'm not going to say scribbles, but decoration. I'm not going to look inside because that's going to not just give us a clue, but just tell us what we get. But I can sort of think in which direction this is going to go. On to the main event. Let's open this up. The sticker matching this month's scroll zine. The list of supplies, which I'm not going to look at. And then A huge box of markers, which obviously I really, really like because markers in colors. But we also get some other things. First of all, we get Uncle Joe's mint balls. That's a candy that I don't know, so. Not sure what to, not sure what to expect there. We also get a Koinor Hartmut in B. Love that. We get a pen liner, with presumably in a bold and a no, it's two colors, I think. Wait, I know a very little Japanese, so I'm going to try to read this. This definitely says black color, so this should be saying... This is also the name for color, but I'm not sure whether this... It's a different character anyway, so... This is not going to be the same color, and since the cap is gray, I'm going to presume it's gray, but we'll swatch that in a minute. But it's 
it looks like these are two different colors so that's going to be interesting and then we get a central pen liner 2811F but it's a sort of plasticky nib press and click oh maybe that's just meant to put the cap back on made in the Czech Republic that's about all we know but I presume this is oh I was going to say I presume this is going to write black but then I rubbed against the cap and it is it does show black so this is black as well and then boom, colors and what is so special about these flexi cali creative flexible italic brush tips that does sound really interesting so they say brush tip but they show I'm going to show it in close up it, it shows a chisel nib I'm just going to um, put all of this aside and swatch because now I'm a bit confused whether it's probably it's going to be a brush tip because they say it's a brush tip flexible brush tip yeah makes sense starting off with the supplies that came separately First of all, our Koinor pencil. As with previous Koinor pencils that we got, a little scratchier than you would expect for the softness, but the color is great. And it's quite light, so if you like light pencils, highly recommend. Next we have our liner. I'm always a little bit skeptical of liners with a plastic nib, but this seems to work quite fine nothing spectacular it doesn't feel dry but it also doesn't feel overly juicy so it's a really really good medium point and an advantage that a plastic nib has over a felt tip nib is that it doesn't just do line art it, it's also better suited for writing so uh, I, I usually prefer not to write with the same pens that I do line work with because it ruins the nib but you know if you're into that you can next we have the biggest mystery of this box it looks like two brush nibs it's not a very flexible nib And it also doesn't do very fine lines. But you do get two different colors, which is quite nice if you like easy shadowing. And since they gave us this in a calligraphy box, I presume that you're meant to use the colors for like the lettering itself and then use maybe this uh, brush pen or dual, dual tip brush pen for shadows or maybe you know, like details. Anyway, so far the grayscale, on to the colors. But even in the colors, we start off with black. And I'm very curious to see. We do get a chisel nib, but it is rather spectacular in, in shape. I'm going to give you this zoomed in because it's chisel like it's chisel tip shaped but with indents and presumably that is what gives it its flex let's test them out 
Ja, gut. I was going to say it's kind of weird. It really isn't that weird. But I also don't really get what the fuss is about. I mean, it's as far as I'm concerned, it's a marker with a chisel tip. It works. Colors are great, but I really don't. I don't see much difference between like just using it as a chisel tip and then using the flex. What I do like though is that you don't get what I call an overlap shadow. Like you get a you get a really even tone if you layer layer them only a little and while they are wet. But you know. All done, time to get some sketching in.
some final thoughts. First of all, super happy with the colors that we got because they're very bright. Secondly, as I said while swatching, I don't really know what the added benefit of the flex nips is, but they also didn't bother me, so quite cool. Thirdly, something that I forgot to mention, the uh, scroller challenge for this month is a scenic aesthetic, which means sort of doodles in script form, but without actual meaning or uh, symbolism, which I think the drawing that I did fit very well. And fourthly, no, I have no, I have two, two more points and these are negatives. The um, central pen was a little drier than I expected on this paper. It worked really, really well when I swatched it. I quite like the thinness of the line because most plastic nibs that I have are a little thicker and I was kind of excited to have maybe like a really thin one, but it felt really dry on the paper that they provided. I don't know if that's intentional, but for me it was a bit of a no-no, so I might give that pen away. And lastly, the ink in the flexi script pens dries a rather slowly because I smudged it and then I went over it with the pen that I couldn't read and that worked quite well. I also must note that the black in the flexi markers that we got is not very 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 black and opaque which probably means that it's not very pigmented and also probably not light fast. But I will have to read on to know for sure. These are just my remarks and comments. I know I sound a little harsh and maybe disappointed. I'm really not. I really love these colors and I really like the markers and I'm probably going to use them uh, quite a lot. I, I even quite liked the challenge because like doodling in weird shapes and, and trying to make like alphabets is something that I really like doing. And still having got quite a lot of stuff and lovely colors and, and this challenge that I like, I really didn't get the results that I think I should have gotten or could have gotten. So, not disappointed, medium content. That being said, I'll hope to see you again next Tuesday. It's goodbye. Bye.